All right, guys, it's Chatterbox Reviews. Coming to you guys my review for the HBO miniseries, The Regime. All right, so I'm a little late to the party with this one. Uh, I think it wrapped up about a month ago now, uh, right from the finale to now. It's, it's been about a month. Uh, but I really wanted to share my thoughts on this miniseries. Um, just so much to dig into here, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, and I know that it didn't get great reviews. I guess you could say kind of mixed to negative, I would say, uh, reviews for this one. And I did check out the first couple episodes when it actually was airing. Um, and I kind of fell behind and then just you know caught up recently and I was like I gotta still share my thoughts on this because there's there's just so much that I want to talk about um and and kind of you know dig into and hopefully discuss with you guys you know so I'd love to hear your guys thoughts of this mini series uh, if you watch it all the way through or maybe you just saw some of it maybe the the mixed or negative reviews you, you agree with and maybe kind of fell off um so love to hear you know any of your guys thoughts um you know of this series, positive or negative. Um, so yeah, in the comments below, I'd uh, love to discuss with you guys. Uh, and if you enjoyed this review, please have a like and consider subscribing to the channel as well. Would really appreciate that. Uh, very close to that 1,000 subscriber number. Uh, so yeah, would really uh, extra appreciate uh, any uh, subscribers uh, right now, uh, you know, considering that we're that close. So that, that would be awesome. But anyways, uh, so we'll get into this. I, I don't have, like, I guess that many thoughts. This shouldn't be the longest review ever. Um, but just some things that I really wanted to kind of dive into here um, and talk about with this mini series because I think above all else this is not boring right <laughs> I think for some other shows this year that I, that I have watched so far I'm like yeah like this is just not that interesting like it's just kind of boring um, but this show I don't think you can say that even if you came out pretty negative on the show I think at the very least you could say well it wasn't really boring like it was interesting at least there was always something happening or something weird or wacky going on that kind of caught your attention. Now, did it all come together? You know, maybe not for some people and, and it didn't for me either. Um, but yeah, I think you, you can't really say it was boring or at least that that's my opinion. So uh, yeah, full spoilers, by the way, uh, for the series now after this point. So Full spoilers if you have not seen the series uh, yet, but um, obviously it's been out for quite a while, um, and I assume if you wanted to watch it, you probably already have. So this is uh, created by Will Tracy, uh, who is a writer on Succession, uh, wrote some of my like favorite Succession episodes, right? Turnhaven in season two, um, I believe was it uh, What It Takes, I think, in season three, and then season four, uh, it was a great episode. It was Tailgate Party, episode seven, uh, which was a really, really great uh, episode there in season four. Uh, Turnhaven is one of my favorites, though, of the series, and, uh, and he wrote that one. So um, yeah, obviously, you know, recognizable name for me, and anyone who's you know seen Succession, maybe you haven't heard his name, but now you know hearing that he wrote some of those episodes, maybe you'd be kind of intrigued, right? And uh, he also co-wrote The Menu, uh, the film from 2022 uh, as well, which got quite a bit of praise. I think a lot of people, you know, critics and audiences, you know, really liked that film. Um, and I would say it was relatively close to the Academy Awards conversation as well. Um, and and I did see that that movie, and I'll share my thoughts kind of. On that, on that uh, film later on, because I think there's a lot of comparisons to be drawn between that and this series. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the credits for Will Tracy there. And Stephen Frears as well as directing this one. Um, and he's, he's had a, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, he's done some big projects, I would say. Um, he's, he's had a bit of a, a great career, I think, uh, you could say, obviously he's British and I believe he directed Little Miss Sunshine, um, or, or wrote it or something like that. I think that was his film. Um, if not, you know, it's in that kind of British comedic kind of, uh, scene there. And so he directs, uh, I believe three or four episodes of this miniseries too. Um, so just some of the names behind it there. So uh, this series follows the collapse of a fictional authoritarian regime in Central Europe, uh, but takes place in our modern world, right? So it's 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 kind of a it's kind of tongue in cheek, I guess, at times for sure. Um, to the point of, you know, kind of nodding to the audience a little bit that yes, it's a fictional regime in this fictional country in that you know within Central Europe. 
but it's in our modern world. And so it's, you know, they mention Russia, Germany, you know, China, right? They, they mention all the real countries and the real players. Um, they even like show clips from BBC and CNN. So it basically is, is our modern world. It's almost reality. It's just like bordering on it, right? Just at the edge of it. But at the end of the day, it is fictional. So that's the premise uh, for this series. And what a fascinating premise, right? Like that was the main thing along with Kate Winslet um, that really caught my attention with this one. So, um, yep. So obviously it stars Kate Winslet. She is the head of this one. Um, and then uh, a name that I really wanted to talk more about with this review, who I think was amazing in the series, was Matthias Schoenarts. I think that's how you uh, pronounce his name. I think he's uh, from Belgium. Um, an actor there and he hasn't had a lot of big projects in terms of you know at least American projects um, you know maybe he is bigger in, in uh, you know some Belgian and French uh, projects there but I haven't seen him before and I think he was so great in this series um, a lot of just great acting in terms of the comedy right the comedic moments and then the dramatic moments and just being this like unhinged kind of freak at times um, I thought he was really great. Um, and then we have uh, Guillermo uh, Gellien. I, I feel like I'm definitely mispronounced that, but he's also French. Um, and he plays, um, you know, Kate Winslet's, um, you know, her character's husband uh, in the series. And then we have Andrea Riseborough, uh, who's an Oscar nominee now. Uh, it's still crazy that she got that nomination, um, but she's been a great actress. And uh, she was in the Waco miniseries as well, which I really loved her in. Um, and then Hugh Grant, right? He's a big name. Spoiler alert, obviously he's not in the series that much, maybe like one or two episodes, but he is obviously one of the bigger names in the cast and uh, a big get, you know, to get a guy like Hugh Grant for this one. Um, and then many others, right? Martha Plimpton's in, Plimpton is in there as well. Um, so kind of a big ensemble cast for this one. So, and then if you want to talk about the performances, like I said, already gave Matthias Schoenarts a lot of credit. I think he was great. Kate Winslet obviously is great. I mean, when has she not been great in something that she was in? Like, she was amazing in Mayor of Easttown to me. Some of the best I've seen from her in her career. Um, you know, I obviously haven't seen everything, but from what I've seen, amazing in Mayor of Easttown. Um, and she was great, just so great in this series, nailing the comedic moments and even doing the, the lisp or the kind of, you know, the way she was talking throughout it, um, adapting that into this character. So, um, yeah, she was great. And uh, Andrew Rosbro was good in this one. And Hugh Grant, you know, I thought he was good for, for the time he was in uh, in the series here. So the overall kind of thought to me of this series is it just doesn't live up to its great potential. And to me, like I said, with that premise, I was so into this series, right? I was, I was you know, they had me, right? They, they had me hooked. I needed to check this out. I needed to see it. And then hearing Kate Winslet was in it. So I think it had so much potential, especially with a writer like Will Tracy coming from Succession and just kind of the vibe of that series with the really great satire um, and the comedic elements of that. And it just had so much potential to be a really, you know, effective satire at kind of the political landscape right now, um, authoritarian regimes, right, dictators and the, the, you know, the types of leaders like that. Um, that we see in the world, obviously the U.S., right, <laughs> you know, throughout the series, the role that the U.S. plays in kind of regime building um, or uh, regime toppling rather, right, um, yeah, and, and regime building, I guess, too, right, like installing leaders in countries and that stuff, so it had so much potential, but it just doesn't live up to it to me at the end of the day. Um, I saw this great comment on it, and I completely agree. It's not funny enough to be a comedy or a satire, and it's not serious enough to be a compelling drama. I think that's a really great way to put it. Kind of simplistic terms, of course, but I think that's a perfect way to, you know, basically summarize the issues of this series. The main issue, at least, is it just had trouble finding its tone, right? It just didn't quite capture that. And, and Succession, I love Succession, but I think very early on in season one of Succession, I, I have always said this on the channel, those first four or five episodes of the season one there, I don't think they really had, a, you know, a clear tone, right? They didn't quite know, especially that pilot episode, it doesn't quite achieve that tone that they then, you know, perfect, like really perfect and really um, turn into something great later on in the seasons and as the show goes on with Succession. 
And to me, this series had, you know, the same problem, I think worse than Succession, obviously, but it had a similar problem where it just didn't quite know its tone throughout the series. I mean, there's some points of the series that are really effective satire, and I'll get to that. You know, obviously I had a lot of positives with this series too. Um, there are really effective satire, some like hilarious comedy at times as well. And then there's other parts where they really try to go dramatic, and especially with the relationship between Herbert and Elena, um, and it just doesn't quite land, right? It's so great. Like, it's not funny enough to be a comedy, not serious enough to be a drama, um, because it's hard to get us to buy into those dramatic moments when you have this absurdity and this comedy that's playing out kind of, you know, alongside it. And obviously, you can do that. You can have comedy and drama at the same time, Succession, and even the episodes that Will Tracy wrote for Succession are a perfect example of that, just a pitch-perfect balance of comedy and drama. But it just, that balance is just not reached here uh, in this series for whatever reason, right? I'm not sure, you know, obviously, you know, maybe the writing wasn't as sharp as what it could have been. I, I know Will Tracy didn't write every episode either, so maybe, you know, obviously he doesn't deserve all of the blame. He is the showrunner, though, after all. Um, but yeah, maybe it was, just wasn't consistent, the tone with all these writers that were working on the show. I'm not exactly sure the reason, but that, I think, is the main issue. If you're gonna look at something here with the series, what went wrong, I think it's just the tone. The tone just isn't consistent, isn't even throughout the series uh, here. So, like I said, though, some really great stuff that I needed to talk about with this series. So, there was some, there was some, you know, moments, sequences, points uh, that are, that really are impressive to me, like, that were really great, and the kind of little glimpses, and none of them were ever really fully realized, unfortunately, but we did see them. So the first one I want to talk about is the Wes Anderson feel, and what I would kind of consider, like, the Grand Budapest Hotel, right? Obviously, Wes Anderson has this kind of style, it's this kind of um, absurd, right, satire or comedy where everything is just kind of elevated, right, and he really dives in uh, with something like Grand Budapest Hotel with obviously just like the way he films the movie, but also just everything, the character names, the um, locations, the, you know, the, the costumes, just everything in his movies are so meticulously designed um, into this kind of elevated world, right, and we did have elements of that, I think, in the series, and it begins right away with even the intro, uh, the intro theme, right to the to the credits here, with Alexander Desplat, right, uh, composing the music uh, for the title, and I think he does the majority of the episodes of the series here. Um, so immediately, it, it has that Wes Anderson feel. Uh, obviously, he he did compose the score for the Grand Budapest Hotel, um, and has done other Wes Anderson films. I can't remember if he did. Um, if he did Asteroid City or not, I believe he did. Yeah, I believe he did. And then he he definitely did the French Dispatch too. So um, those two have been kind of collaborating for, for a few years now. And so just hearing that music and it kind of is done in the same vein as something like Grand Budapest Hotel. So right away, you get that feeling, you get that Wes Anderson kind of elevated feeling to it. And then obviously just some of the visuals in the in the series really felt like that. Some of the characters, again, Elena, I think is a great example. It's kind of this, you know, heightened, right? Heightened absurdity a little bit in it. Um, and of course, like the extravagant settings, right, with the palace and seeing that. And um, again, this kind of fictional regime with this fictional leader, the chancellor, uh, right, with Elena. So I feel like they really could have taken a more grounded approach to this, right, and had it, you know, be a chancellor that's kind of very, you know, self-serious and this kind of thing. Um, but it does have that kind of Wes Anderson absurdity feel to it. Um, now, I'm not saying it's on the same level as Grand Budapest Hotel, obviously, but I'm saying there's elements of it. And I personally love Wes Anderson. I love Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, I just love what he does with his films. Um, and so to me, that was a big positive. Some of the satire was pretty effective, though not that funny, right? So even like I said, it's not funny enough to be a comedy. Um, even some of the satire that wasn't necessarily like hilarious or laugh out loud, 
it was pretty effective. Like some of the stuff in this series was pretty smart, was was pretty effective. Um, obviously, the U.S. involvement in in these countries is something that really stuck out. Um, even just some of the great like nods to modern day things that were in here as well. Um, I think the big one in this series when they talk about um, reuniting with their Fabian brothers, right, in the Fabian corridor, that just screams Russia and Crimea, right? Uh, Crimea, right? It's it's like literally, I believe that was in 2014, right, when they annexed uh, Crimea and they, it was like very much the same thing where they had a vote, right, uh, for, um, you know, the Crimea, the people living in Crimea to join Russia and they won the vote, but there was obviously rumors and I believe evidence even that they held some people at gunpoint or very much pressured people to vote a certain way in favor of, you know, the annexation of Crimea. And that's literally in the series, you know, we get the kind of heightened thing of, oh, they literally held people at gunpoint to vote. Um, but it's very much drawing that kind of similar comparison to Russia and Crimea and what happened there. And then we get that here and it's just slightly elevated and it's kind of funny, right? Um, but not like, again, not hilarious. The comedy is not quite on the same level as something like Succession, obviously. Um, but again, there's some effective little nods like that and satirical bits where, yeah, it's pretty effective at what it's saying, right? Like you can see the real world comparison of what they're talking about and they're right. Like they are right. They're making a really good point here and something that, you know, is obviously you can tell, right? And I mean, a big part of the series is this elites, right? Versus the common folk, uh, right? And this comparison um, between how they live in the palace and, you know, her uh, in the one episode having to go out to the beetroot country uh, or the sugar beet, you know, country uh, and meet with the people and smell the air and this stuff. So yeah, I mean, that's just great satire too, because it's just commenting or really depicting how the elites view the common people, right? Um, and how they can be so detached, right? Living in their palace and, and this stuff. So in that case, it's kind of a literal thing of that, um, you know, how they're stuck in their palace and they don't know the common folk. Uh, they don't know their struggles and this stuff. Um, but yeah, just, you know, effective. Some, some really great moments, some really great comments on little elements like that, you know, in the terms of the political landscape of today's world as well. Um, even the whole China thing, right? They, they flock to China once they get uh, are enemies of the US. And that's just so true to today's world. It's like any country who gets in a spat with one of them suddenly becomes best friends with the other. Um, and that's just kind of how it seems to be these days uh, in terms of the geopolitical landscape. Um, and so, yeah, so some really great stuff. And, and like I said, effective kind of comments and nods to modern day uh, issues and, and kind of what we see right now in today's world. So one element though, that I just didn't really understand, and I think the series would have been much better uh, for it without it, um, is the, the, the kind of love story or the relationship here between Elena and Herbert, especially towards the second half of the series to me. Um, I think it just took away from the satire and really emphasized the, dr the dramatic elements of the series. Um, which, yeah, I, I really liked it at the beginning, though. In episode one, and ep I think episode two is maybe my favorite of the series. Um, I think so. I, I liked episode three, too. But I think episode two is my favorite because it's, that's really the episode where she actually adopts Herbert and, you know, is kind of having, I believe at that point, sexual relations with him, uh, right? And, and this kind of relationship starts brewing between the two. And Herbert has this command over her and she's just doing anything that he says basically um because she's so infatuated with him and just the idea that he's this descendant of the foundling right um and you know she's obsessed with him basically and so we get that whole you know point and and it's kind of satirical i think it's really effective in that way of how you know she just buys into everything he says um you know and it's this kind of idea of that you know there's this legacy and there's this made up kind of history about him and like i said this connection to the first foundling and so because of that no, he has to be believed, right? Yeah, he, of course, what he says is right. Um, and so it is kind of a, an effective satire there. And I think a lot of those elements were, were, were pretty funny. But then it's like episode four and five to me where they get back together, right? After she imprisons him, um, 
they get back together and I don't know, it just kind of bogged down to me, the satire and the story here. And I just, you know, it was just so toxic between them. I never really connected to that on a real level that it was actually, you know, they were in love with each other. Um, it was kind of funny to me. It was a good satire kind of bit of the show, bit, a comedic bit. Um, but then when it actually got kind of serious towards the end of the, the, the series, I just didn't, I didn't think it played out that well. Um, and in the last two episodes, I think, are probably among the worst of the series, if not the worst. Um, they just didn't come together that well for me. And a big part of that is because of how emphasized Elena and Herbert were. And the constant, you know, scenes of Herbert thinking that she was going to betray him, her telling him no, and then, of course, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the series, as we all figured... She does betray him, and, uh, you know, he ends up being killed. Um, though I did like the very last visual of him being in the glass case now rather than her uh, detty, right, as <laughs> she says. So um, I did like that, but, yeah, just kind of messy uh, towards the end of the series here, and I think this relationship really hurt that. I really would have liked the track if they just continued on it from episode two and then just kind of, even when Herbert's in prison, maybe just kind of forget about him. You know, I love Herbert, I love the character, but maybe just forget about him and then kind of change the trajectory of the end of the series. And I think that would have been much more effective, at least in the comedic side of things, for sure. So that was that was definitely kind of a big negative for me. Um, and then the other one that I just wanted to end off with is there was no clear message or through line to me. Um, of the series that really connected everything, kind of brought it all together. Um, I just don't think it was fully realized. Again, I think there were some really effective nods and comments on modern day um, and the satirical side of things. You know, some of it was funny, but not that funny, um, but still kind of effective. But it, the whole thing just didn't really, really come together. I mean, I guess you could say at the end it is kind of satirical and, and really effective though, because it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, she was literally, you know, being hunted down and about to be killed by the resistance, uh, you know, people, right? And, uh, or the, the protesters, right? Of the Westgate and all this stuff. And then she just ends up being reinstated by the US, right? You know, pretty propped up by the US and she just continues leaving the country. Um, and it's it's also, it's not even just the US, but it's also like the richest businessman in the country who helps prop her up. And so it's kind of this comment of, yeah, I mean, big business and the, and the US kind of win at the end of the day and can do anything they want. Um, so that was an effective comment, but is that like, is that the message of the whole series? Like, no, I don't think that really ties everything up together. So yeah, it's kind of a strong note to end the series off on. Again, not the, not the most hilarious or not the most comedic uh, thing, but it is, again, it's a commenting on a modern thing that's very true. I think a lot of people see that, especially these days, uh, you know, after all that we've seen with the Middle East and all that stuff. So um it's effective, but it's not a clear kind of thing that connects the whole series together. It just doesn't doesn't bring it all together. There's just nothing here to me at the very end of the series that really says, okay, this is what the point of this was. This is what we're trying to comment on. Um, it was almost more seemed like it was just an experience of this year. And I guess that's kind of what it was sold as is this year of this regime, right? Um, but I would have liked to see a through line here of what kind of the point of the series was, what the message is at the end of it. Um, and this is where I want to talk about the menu because I always, I did see that film. I did quite enjoy it. But to me, what was missing about the menu is the same thing. It was this through line and this thing that kind of brought it all together at the end and yeah, it just didn't feel fully realized to me either. Um, and if you haven't seen the menu, I'm not going to try to spoil anything here. Um, but the ending did kind of make me feel the same way. It really felt like, oh, there is a bit of a comment, you know, at the end of the uh, at the end of the film. Again, similar to this one, but I don't know. It just feels like Will Tracy in, in both projects here just didn't have a kind of a clear message or really fleshed out this whole idea and really try to hit it home at the end of, of both projects in the menu and this one. Um, yeah, it just is, it just feels like it's a really great idea and some really strong elements and comments on things, um, but it just isn't brought all together at the end. It's just not fully realized to what it could have been. Um, I feel maybe a little bit strongly more about that with the menu than this series. Um, 
but um, that is something that I, I literally I left the menu saying there's just something missing here and I felt like that that's the exact same kind of feeling I had when this mini series wrapped up here with the finale so yeah hoping you know obviously still really looking forward to something that Will Tracy does next I love his angle on things though with his political commentary and the satire again I think the premise for this series and just the idea in general really strong re like I'm really interested in that and so I'm really looking forward to what he does next but I really hope he really kind of thinks about it long term and really ties it all together and gives us a really good ending um, that connects everything uh, because so far to me I haven't seen that in either of his projects but anyways they'll just go do it then I think uh, I think I think that's it uh, for all my thoughts on the regime like I said some really positive stuff here um, I really liked elements of it just not fully realized and doesn't achieve its its kind of full potential to what it could have been. So love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one, uh, like I said off the top. Um, again, I've heard kind of mixed to negative reviews, um, but if you really love this series, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts as well. Why did you love it? Um, did you hate it? Any of that stuff uh, is, is always welcome in the comments. So yeah. Um, I'll just go do it for this one then. So thank you guys so much for watching this one. And stay tuned on the channel uh, for some future reviews as well. I'll be looking at uh, some throwback pilots coming up. Um, and uh, House of the Dragon in a couple weeks when that releases as well. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this one. And we'll see you then in my next review.